Welcome back to Anatomy and Physiology on Catalyst University. In this video, we're going to be learning about the cubital fossa. And so we're going to take a look at a bunch of pictures here and hopefully get a good grasp of the boundaries of the cubital fossa and then also the contents. And within those contents, we'll see two layers, a superficial layer and a deep layer. Now, first of all, what is the cubital fossa? Where is it? Well, if we look at our arm at the elbow joint on the anterior surface, so this is the side opposite the olecranon, it's the non-bony part. If you put your fingers right there at the crease on your elbow, that's really where the cubital fossa is. Okay? Um, there's actually an indentation in here uh, that actually allows for the passage of a bunch of important structures from the proximal arm down into the distal arm. Okay? So right here, the bones, we see the humerus proximally. Here's the elbow joint. We can see the humerus articulating with the ulna medially. And then here's the radius in gray laterally. And the cubital fossa really is going to be formed in this triangular fashion by three major boundaries around it. Okay, we have a superior boundary, a lateral boundary, and a medial boundary. Now superior, we can really say the proximal boundary, but really that's this epicondylar line. This is an imaginary line that's drawn between the two epicondyles of the humerus. So over here is the larger medial epicondyle, and over here is the smaller lateral epicondyle. And so if we draw an imaginary line between those, that's the epicondylar line, that's the proximal or superior border. Now the lateral border is really made up over here by the brachioradialis muscle. And then the medial border over here is made up by pronator teres. Okay? Now those are the three boundaries that make up this triangle. However, we have a floor of it, a deep part of it, and then a roof that goes over it. So the floor of the cubital fossa is really made up of a couple of muscles. On the medial side, you can't see it right here, but we'll eventually look at a picture where you can, the brachialis muscle is actually going to be over here. Okay? And then on the lateral side on the floor, we would actually see part of the supinator muscle. So those two muscles collectively make up the floor, uh, the deeper part of the cubital fossa. And then the roof that covers this, the superficial part, is just fascia. So the cubital fascia specifically. And the cubital fascia is really a continuation of the brachial fascia, which is up here in the brachium. And then past this, uh, the cubital fascia continues down as antibrachial fascia, because this is the antibrachium down here, or the forearm. Okay, so hopefully these boundaries make sense. All right, let's take another look at this in another picture. Now we can see some of these muscles filled in. Um, this muscle right here is brachialis. Now, of course, biceps brachii has been taken off, but we'll actually see that the tendon of biceps brachii actually makes its way into the cubital fossa. So here's brachialis. Here's the epicondylar line. Remember, that's an imaginary line drawn between the larger medial epicondyle over here, and then here's the lateral epicondyle of the humerus over here. Um, this muscle would make up the medial border. You can see this is pronator teres right here. And then this muscle, this is brachioradialis. And it's not going to be a perfect triangle, but I think you get the idea. So brachioradialis is your lateral border, pronator teres is the medial border, and the superior or proximal border is your uh, epicondylar line. Okay. Now let's open this up. Let's remove the cubital fascia and remove these muscles and take a look at what's on the inside. What contents can we find inside the cubital fossa? And what we're going to find is a superficial layer and a deep layer. We're going to look at the deep layer first. Okay. And in the deep layer, we have three or four structures depending on your text. Okay. The first three are here regardless. Okay. We have the tendon, of the biceps brachii. We have the brachial artery that comes with the brachial vein, but usually we just say brachial artery. And then we have the median nerve. Now, if we look at this picture specifically, over here is a medial border, and here's the lateral border. And if we take a zoom in on these structures, this is the median nerve right here. The median nerve is the most medial of all three of these. Okay? If we go lateral to that, we have here the brachial artery. And of course, the brachial artery will divide into a, an ulnar artery going toward the ulnar side and a radial artery going toward the radial or lateral side. But again, we have that brachial artery in here. And then this green structure right here, this is really the tendon of biceps brachii. OK, 
Okay, so if we go from lateral to medial, we have biceps brachii tendon, we have this brachial artery, and then we have the nerve, the median nerve. Okay, those three structures, kind of three and a half if you count the brachial vein, those are what we find definitely in the cubital fossa. However, some textbooks will also include the radial nerve as being in the cubital fossa. Um, you can at the very least find the radial nerve and ulnar nerve nearby. The ulnar nerve is going to be more uh, medial to the cubital fossa, more over here. And then the radial nerve you can actually see shown here. And the reason they show it is because part of it is in the cubital fossa. Some sources will not include it because it doesn't really go through that much of it. Okay. In fact, if we look at the radial nerve, and the radial nerve is just going up to right here. It actually terminates right here because the radial nerve divides into its two branches. Okay. Uh, this one right here, this is the superficial branch of the radial nerve. Okay. This one is the deep branch of the radial nerve. And we'll talk about in the next video uh, the significance of the deep branch. We'll see that it actually becomes the posterior interosseous nerve. But the point is, is the radial nerve itself doesn't really exist for that long in the cubital fossa. So some sources will say it does include that, some will say it does not. Okay, But these three right here, tendon of biceps brachii is the most lateral, brachial artery in the middle, median nerve is most medial. These three are definitely in the cubital fossa. You'll want to consult with your instructor or text as to whether or not to include the radial nerve in that. So that was the deep layer. Now let's take a look at the superficial layer. Before we go to the next slide, let's keep in mind what we're looking for. We're looking for the basilic vein, the cephalic vein, median cubital vein, which we'll actually be discussing in a few videos from now. It's kind of interesting. It has some genetic variations in it. And then also the bicipital aponeurosis, which is an, a second tendon-like structure coming off of the biceps brachii. Um, and we'll actually see that here. Let's actually look at that first. This green structure right here, let me trace it just so you can see what I'm talking about. It's kind of a partially translucent green structure, this thing right there. That is the bicipital aponeurosis. You can see that right here. The biceps brachii kind of has two tendons. It has kind of the proper tendon, which is this right here, and that was actually in the deep layer. We saw that before. In fact, we can even see brachial artery right here with the brachial vein and then the median nerve. So the bicipital aponeurosis goes over those structures, and what it is is it's a, a thicker aponeurotic tendon um, that actually wraps around here and actually uh, inserts on the ulna. So actually, most people assume the biceps brachii just inserts on the radius, and it does insert on the radius, but through the bicipital aponeurosis, it also inserts on the ulna. And so when you perform elbow flexion, um, it's not such an unstable movement, so you're not just pulling on the radius, you're actually pulling on both of these bones of the forearm. Okay, So that's your bicipital aponeurosis. Now for the veins. All three are superficial veins. So the first one is this, right here. In fact, we can trace it all the way up, from here all the way up here, Okay, and it goes much further in either direction. This is called the basilic vein. So the basilic vein is a superficial vein, and it's a general name for veins that drain blood from the medial side of the upper extremity. So the basilic vein goes all the way down to the hand. It's in the wrist. It's clearly here in the forearm. Cubital fossa. You can see it coursing through the cubital fossa right here. And then it's going to keep going up until it eventually uh, penetrates into the deeper tissue and becomes the axillary vein. Okay, so that's actually what it becomes once it penetrates through the brachial fascia up here. Okay, but the basilic vein is just a general term for any superficial vein that's actually draining the upper extremity, at least until it becomes the axillary vein, way up here, which we can't see. There's another one, which in this picture, it's not so much within the cubital fossa, but um, there's a lot of genetic variation in this, and so in most individuals it is. This right here is the cephalic vein. Okay. The cephalic vein is, in the same way as the basilic vein, a general term for a superficial vein, but instead the cephalic vein drains the lateral upper extremity. So like the basilic vein on the medial side, the cephalic vein is going to be draining the hand, the wrist, the lateral forearm. It's going to go up 
all the way up to the top, way up near the deltoid. And in the deltopectoral triangle, there it will penetrate the fascia and it will actually dump uh, into the axillary vein. All right. But again, basilic vein, general term for superficial vein that drains the medial part of the upper extremity. Uh, right here, the cephalic vein is a general term for any vein that's superficial that drains the lateral part of the upper extremity. And you can see here the cephalic vein doesn't really get into the cubital fossa much, but in a lot of individuals it does. There's a lot of genetic variation in these superficial veins, and that's exemplified also by the median cubital vein, which also has an equivalent term median antecubital vein. So this is the same as median cubital vein. You can see that right here as a connection between the cephalic system laterally and the basilic system medially. And that's exactly what the median antecubital vein is. It doesn't always look like this. This particular vein has actually the most genetic variation of all of these, but in some individuals it will look like this. But in any individual that has it, it's going to connect the basilic system medially to the cephalic system laterally. And you can clearly see it coursing through the cubital fossa right here. Let's take another look at this and see both the deep and superficial contents of the cubital fossa. We'll begin with the superficial ones over here. So this muscle underneath the fascia, this would be where biceps brachii is, and you can see the, uh, the aponeurosis of biceps brachii. So here's the aponeurosis. You can see it coming off of where the biceps brachii would be, and it's extending out uh, toward the ulna, which would be on the medial side over here, and you can see it spreading out. So it's very aponeurotic. It's very broad at its insertion. So that's your bicipital aponeurosis. Right here you can see the basilic vein. So that's the superficial vein that drains the medial part of the arm, forearm, hand, all sorts of stuff. And all of these right here, these are all basilic. Okay? It's really more of a basilic system because it's a general term for any of these veins superficially uh, that are draining the medial part of the arm, or really the upper extremity in general. Okay, So that's basilic vein. Here's a cephalic vein over here. Um, you can start with the cephalic vein here, and you can follow it up. And again, it's draining the lateral part of the upper extremity. Then we have here the median cubital vein. And remember the median cubital vein, a general term for the vein that is connecting the basilic system to the cephalic system. So this right here would be median cubital. And sometimes what you'll also see is there's a median antebrachial vein. Notice that this is median cubital or median anticubital vein. This one right here is the median antebrachial vein. And so this is actually going to be a superficial vein that's going to be draining blood really from the, the middle part, superficial middle part of the forearm, and it's going to give that blood really back to um, either the cephalic system or the median cubital vein, but again, there's a lot of genetic variation, and we'll look at that actually in a future video, as you can see right here. However, the median antebrachial vein is not in the cubital fossa. So that gives us our four superficial structures, bicipital aponeurosis, basilic vein, cephalic vein, and the median cubital vein. And for the deep structures right here, you can see, first of all, here's the tendon of biceps brachii. I forget the aponeurosis for a second. Notice that we've got, and move this out of the way, you can actually see the tendon right here going underneath the aponeurosis, but that tendon goes toward the radius, the radial tuberosity to be specific. Then medial to that we have the brachial artery, and medial to that we have the median nerve. Okay, um, So hopefully this makes sense to you, and hopefully you understand a little bit more about the boundaries of the cubital fossa and its contents. In the next video, we're going to be talking a little bit more about the radial nerve, and we're going to actually follow its course down through the cubital fossa and see how it divides and then talk about what those divisions actually do. Please make sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel for future videos and notifications. Thank you.